Last night we rescued 51 horses out of the slaughter pipeline. We have a lot of horses here. Okay, so I have to get the photo of the horse. 51 horses loaded up and ready to head back to our shelter. This little pony has gone through probably years of neglect with his hooves. There's a lot of things I wanna do and I'm not entirely sure how much time I'm gonna to have to do it. So I'm gonna do everything I can while I'm here. Wow, well that's not a conversation anybody wants to, uh, wants to have. Looks like I'm heading back to chemo for another year. I guess I need to call Tani and let her know that uh, we didn't get all the cancer with the surgery. Going into mentoring Colorado Horse Rescue Network, we knew that with Carrie having cancer that there could be complications and we just got the worst news. It was, it was pretty devastating. I was actually at work that day knowing that now it's another year of chemo and seeing how it affected her made me want to step up more. I can't imagine what Carrie's going through. She's such a fighter and for her struggling through cancer and thinking that this surgery was going to fix it and she was going to be fine, everything that she's gone through, she's going to have to go through more chemo, radiation, it's absolutely devastating that despite everything, she's still going to have to continue this cancer treatment. And she's such a fighter, and I know that she's going to keep keep going, but I wish things, I wish the surgery would have been 100% okay, and they got all the cancer, and that was the end of, end of it for her. But now she's She's got more cancer treatments. It's just devastating. I'll wake up and I don't, and I don't feel good. And I don't feel like doing anything. Um, chemo's hard, you know? I did six rounds of TCHP chemo, which is a, which is a very hard thing to do. Um, and followed that up with a double mastectomy. You know, it's a shocking thing to have to do when you're in your 30s. That's not something that anybody thinks on having to do. Every day Carrie has to go for radiation now and it's just another thing taking her away from the horses but if she can stay focused on the change she's making in the horse rescue world, I think she can get through this. It's just, I can't imagine every day making this drive, taking her away from the horses and you know, it, it's not what I wanted through part of this mentoring is to go back into cancer treatment. But we're here for them and we'll be supporting them every step of the way. First radiation appointment here this morning. Not, uh, not looking forward to it. This is the first of 25. Be doing this for five days a week for five weeks. Good morning. Good morning, Doing good, and how are you, dear? Good, thank you. Ready for the radiation appointment. All right, let's get you checked in. Any COVID symptoms? Nope, not, not today. <laughs> good morning. Ready to get this all started, huh? Yes. Hello. Hi, Terry, how are you today? Doing well, and how are you, sir? I'm doing fine, thanks. Seems like it's gonna be quite a bit easier than chemo or surgery or any of those parts. So I, I certainly hope you find it to be the case, yeah. <laughs> Me too, uh, I radiation, can use a break. <laughs> yeah, usually not too bad on most people, so. 
Good deal. Well, as things come up, let me know if you have questions, but we'll be monitoring you and uh, I anticipate you're gonna do very well with this. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you checking in with me. You're welcome, take care. <laughs> take care. It's very important to have passion as you go through cancer care. Uh, it's a very challenging time for patients. And I found that people who can deflect some of the stress on things that they love really just end up doing a lot better. I mean, breast cancer is such a common thing that we see here in the, in the world of cancer. Uh, it ends up being almost one in nine women at some point in their lives will be affected. So it's just very important to, to get mammograms done, be very aware, examine, and, and know your bodies well. Um, a lot of people think that it can't affect them because they're young, but that's not the case. I mean, breast cancer can affect women as early as in their, their early 30s or even younger and continues to be a risk all through life up until the end of life. Um, oh no, being able to come to, um, you know, this St. Francis campus has been a huge difference for me. Um, their other campus is off of Nevada. It's at least a 30 minute difference in my drive time. Um, so every day it's saving me more than an hour to be able to come here to St. Francis, which is just, as everybody knows, an hour is an hour. Um, and we're real close here to Falcon. Um, we buy a lot of our feed in Falcon. I grocery shop in Falcon. Um, I bank in Falcon. I do a lot of things in Falcon. So just being able to run through and do all my chores on the way home, uh, that makes a huge difference. I'm almost an hour from this treatment center. So saving me, you know, that extra half hour just one way, that makes a big difference. I get to come here every day. Um, I'm here every day for five weeks. That's just how the radiation goes. I'm here, you know, every morning get to come in and, and do my radiation treatments. They do give me the weekends off though, which is, you know, which is nice. I get a couple days to myself, but uh, no, I'm here. 25 days, rain or shine, which is all part of, you know, trying to get this cancer beat. I've been really hopeful that uh, I was gonna have a complete response to chemo and I had a great response to chemo, but it was not a complete response. So now I get to continue my treatments. Um, I've got 25 rounds of chemo, and then I have a year of continuing um, targeted chemotherapy after that. So 25 rounds of radiation and on to a year longer of chemo is not where I wanted to be right now, but whatever I've got to do to keep fighting and stay alive, that's what I'm going to keep doing. Despite all the radiation treatments and everything Carrie's going through, she's still out there on a day-to-day -day basis rescuing horses. And right now they have a pickup. They've got to go pick up some horses and it's gonna be a bit of a drive. We've got two horses that we need to pick up as a surrender up in Anton, Colorado. Ready for a road trip, buddy? Gonna go help me pick up some horses? Yeah? He is a road trip in son of a gun. It looks like we've got some trailer issues. We've got smoke coming from uh, the driver's side rear tri uh, tire on the trailer. It's the brakes. I was gonna say, fire slide. We're unsure if it's brakes or a bearing going out in a hub, but it's definitely one or the other. There's some noise coming from it. There's some smoke. There's a couple of flat spots on the tire that make me think that the tire's locked up a couple times. Smoke coming out from under a trailer is always really bad. Yeah, it's fairly warm. Okay. That one's ice cold to the touch, so that one's, that one's all right, it's gotta be that one. And it's not like flaming or anything, so that's good. The trailer's only two years old. Looks like we've got the brakes locked up on this side for some reason, I don't, I don't, understand why it's acting like that, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and drop the trailer. 
um, and head home without it. And then we'll come up tomorrow and hopefully we can get her straightened out. Um, going down the highway, it just started smoking. Um, and I thought we blew a tire. And um, we didn't blow a tire, but it sure has ground down the surface on the tire. But uh, the hub was hot. I thought maybe we had had a hub come apart. Um, but I don't think we have a seized bearing or anything because we've got both tires on this side locked up now. Um, so I guess we'll drop the trailer and try again tomorrow. This is so typical of rescue and everything that happens. You never know what's going to happen. Here they're out in the road, their trailer is malfunctioning, and Pete is at work and Carrie's going to try to find a spot to put this trailer. You know, you just, you never know what's going to be thrown at you when you're an animal rescuer out on the road. You know, just trying to pick up a couple horses that need help and now they're on the side of the road needing help. After checking things more, it looks like both tires are trying to lock up on that side. Fortunately, we do have a supporter that lives nearby and we can drop the trailer at her place and get headed back so we don't have to worry about trying to limp this trailer home because I'm pretty sure the tires are gonna blow. Okay, so we had a little bit of a hiccup, so we are dropping our trailer off here at a, a supporter of CHRN's facility. We got a hold of her very quickly and she gave us our gate code. I don't think it's flaming to set her place on fire or anything like that though. So I'm pretty sure that, that we've got another, another like six weeks on warranty on it though. I don't think it's related to the brakes. And then when you start rolling the trailer forward and backwards, you can hear that bearing um, in there. So I'm pretty sure that bearing shot. And we were kind of thinking maybe we could limp it at least back home. So in the process of rolling it back and forth, got it to release enough to drive the two miles here um, so that we could at least get to our good friend Stephanie's place where we could leave the trailer until we can bring uh, Pete the Wonder, the Wonder Mechanic out tomorrow and he can hopefully get it straightened out so we can find out what's going on. Of course, we've got some bad weather on the way for the next couple of days. So we'll hopefully be able to get this fixed and brought home and get it straightened out so we know exactly what's going on. Well, that's not how you want to start a road trip. Not at all. Now to find some paperwork. Oh, yep, and get her called in and see if that's going to be a warranty fix or not. Fortunately, I've got Pete on the way over to see if he can get it fixed up for this weekend. If not, we've got other trailers we can use. It's just nice to use CHRN's equipment instead of having to, you know, use our own equipment for stuff like that. But hopefully it'll be an easy fix and he can get it back on the road. Well, I've got spare. From my last broken heart Somehow more Would I have to start Yeah, I've got spare Burn your diesel Alright, just pull these brakes off and call it good, don't you? Yep. I tried to fix it Best I remember I hope it runs when I fire it up Cause I got spare parts So if you see something that you might need Anything you What's left of it might be a perfect fit. Okay, so basically I got home from work and uh, Carrie says that she pulls in and says the trailer's broken. And I ask her where it is, she tells me, and uh, ask her a little bit about it. And what ended up happening was the brakes came apart on the left side and uh, we came up and basically just took the brakes apart took them out, put the truck trailer back together, ready to go down the road again. We'll have to get it fixed before we do a whole lot of heavy hauling, especially over the mountains, but plain stuff, we should be all right for a little bit. They're not hard to do, but you know, it's $200 worth of parts. 
and you know you take it in somewhere it's going to end up being five six hundred dollars to get it done if i do it myself it's going to be a couple hundred dollars worth of parts but trying to find the time to do it is another trick today i got off a little bit early was able to be up here in the daylight generally this is happening at nine ten o'clock at night when we have to go fix something on the side of the road um, it's it's nice to have daylight i even grab my flashlight just in case <laughs> but uh no, it all seems to be back together, good to go. I think we'll hook her up and head on down the road and, and hopefully the other side doesn't decide to quit on us on the way home. Well, thank you very much, Lee, for coming up and helping us get this taken care of. No problem, just in case you had some problems. Well, so it's what we do. I know it is. You help me out a bunch, I help you out a bunch. No problem, anytime. All right, glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Having a good working relationship with law enforcement is extremely important. Hey Scott, good to see you. Carrie, how you been? I've How's been it going? as good as I can possibly ask for right now. And being alive is a good start. <laughs> Fair enough. So what's going on? Well, I figured we could chat about some of these horse issues we've got going and, you know, get some discussion on what we can do to help out. So. In the state of Colorado, we're lucky because you can get a felony um, when it comes to animal cruelty and neglect cases, but it's super hard to obtain a felony here in the state of Colorado. It, it, why would you say it is so difficult to get something escalated to the level of a felony here? It's just the way the statute's written. Uh, you know, it's basically, uh, you have to intentionally uh, kill an animal. Um, but part of our, our case is establishing that there was no feed on the property or water, things like that. When we go to actually do our investigation um, and we get a search warrant, we're ready for seizure. Uh, we have a veterinarian on board, you know, um, we document and so does the veterinarian document, uh, documents that there is what the feed situation is like, um, pasture, hay, that kind of thing, the quality of the hay. Yeah, I mean, El Paso County Sheriff's Office is the most populated, largest um, by population county in Colorado. Um, I think we're just under a million folks in here in uh, El Paso County. Uh, I work in 2,300 square miles. We do uh, equine investigation from one end to the other, from the top of Pikes Peak, which is over 14,000 feet, to uh, the far eastern portion of the county, which is just over 5,000. So uh, equine cases can be vastly different from one end to the other, to include the weather. We try to use education as our first tool, as long as it's not gross neglect. And as far as your uh, caseload, and then maybe just a, a, a base percentage on how many of these calls you think are actually legit. I mean, you. I mean, I know that you guys have got to get calls almost daily on almost animal, daily. Uh, you know, on animal concerns. Uh, on equine, probably one a day, probably one or two a day in El Paso County that will come in, um, and you know. Out, out of them, really only 5% really go into a criminal investigation from there. CHRN has helped out um, several times when you've got um, owner surrender situations. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the success of, of what we do is, is through uh, community cooperation with, with organizations such as yourself. I mean, um, we've run into that quite a bit where somebody, again, just has livestock, they can't take care of it whether they've lost their job or they're physically not able or whatever the means are, or they got into something they didn't realize they were getting into. And it's now beyond a physical or financial ability for them to care for. And uh, it's really nice having an organization like yourself. Um, you've helped us many times on, on criminal cases just because, you know, I mean, my units is a unit of, of three people, you know, sometimes four. Um, if we can get any help to help us with that job, that makes it tremendously easier our open surrender weekend that we were doing with Horse Plus Humane yeah, yeah, yeah. Society. That was the very first time we worked with Horse Plus and the very first time that we'd worked with the Sheriff's Department. It, it was a little funny to have a, a Sheriff's escort for a surrender yeah, to our I open intake that. day. Yeah. yeah, well that 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 owner was, as you found out later, was quite interesting. So. She was a colorful sort, yes. She yeah, was absolutely a, a colorful it, lady. Yeah. Probably should not own animals. Well, we've got 
um, Starburst out here so you can go see him and see how he's doing and how he's growing yeah, that'd be up. Yeah, great. We're... It's been a couple years now, right? All right. So here we have baby Starburst, who's not not such a baby anymore. Oh, actually, it's been a while. Hi, buddy. He, he needs a brush badly. I was going to say, he looks like maybe you should have brushed him before we did this. Yeah. <laughs> so, buddy, how are you? Huh? Good boy. How are you? Hi. Um, I want to turn Starburst into kind of a ranch pony. Mm -hmm. um, he's a good size for it. Yeah, he's a nice boy. He's grown up to be a super nice pony. Yeah, it's nice and you're to get see him. the transition from two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of cool to see a happy ending to this, Addison, don't you think? Yes, you it know, is. Not always do these cases, you know, do we get to have a happy ending? I think out of that really bad case, there's at least a little sliver of, of happiness out of it, huh? Mm -hmm. A happy horse and a happy kid. Yeah. And what a great pair they are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming good out to today, see you. Scott. Yeah. I, I really appreciate young it. Young Addison, we'll see you, young lady. You guys have a good day. Stay yeah. warm. Starburst. Bye. Yep. Right. Take care and stay safe. Yep. In Colorado, every horse has to be seen by a brand inspector. This is a really good thing because it shows proof of ownership. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Terry. How many are we going to do today? Um, we've got 29 total horses, and I think we've got 26 brand inspections to do. But we can go out and look at some horses real quick, and you can get some info, and then we'll come in and get some paperwork done. Okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> so this little soil right here, he's one of the Bartlett horses he is branded. Here? Yep. I think, I think that does it for this pen. So I think we can head in and do this. Okay. Yep, so now we'll get some paperwork done. They've gotten all the information they needed out in the field about the horses. Now they're back in the office, entering the information into the computer. This gives title to the new owner, title of this mule. So what is the price difference between mules and donkeys? Three so it's three dollars on mules and donkeys yeah. and then horses the first is 40. 40. It's about true of everything with horses I think. <laughs> <laughs> they should be more expensive. So we're doing the brand inspection right now for Noodle who has been here for two years as of the 15th of October. He's been here a long time. Um, he'll total oh, it up yeah. for me once he's got that print it out and he'll go through and start adding everything up. All right, so $94 today? Mm -hmm. Well, that's 94. not that's not terrible for us at all. No, under 100. The reason we do brand inspection is to verify ownership when you're selling horses or cattle or mules, and it's a transfer of title. You gotta have proof of ownership for me to do that. Every day after work, Pete has to come home and do all the chores. I know he must be exhausted working a full day and then coming back and doing everything the rescue needs. All right, looks like we got, we put a little bit of hay out this afternoon. Uh, oh, what else we need? We got, looks like they need some water. Looks like we got a bunch of chores to do before we run out of daylight. Yeah, we will have. With good thing we have headlights, right? Got water coming good. Okay, I guess now we'll put a little hay out. Be what you wanna be. What you wanna do And if it sets you free Believe in only you Yesterday is gone Forget about tomorrow And the ceilings you see right through
Find the moment and make it Write your headline and raise it to the sky No one else can create it Take your banner and raise it to the sky Whispers or a shout Gunpowder if it's true Smoke before the fire No one else can slay the dragon Sleeping inside of you Find the moment and make it Write your headline Find the moment and make it Write your headline and raise it to the sky No one else can create it Take your banner and raise it to the sky um, The horses kicked the side of it out and got it down here where they're gonna get themselves hung up on. So I need to just cut that off at another point where it's welded, just to keep them from getting hurt on it. Um, shouldn't take but a minute. Okay, so here in Colorado, we have uh, a lot of wind and we got resourceful. I don't know how many hundreds of years ago um, and figured out if you put a head up there with a gearbox in it that spins and makes it go up and down, that you can put a cylinder in the bottom with a check valve that when that comes up, it opens that check valve, fills it up with water and then pushes it back down and pushes water up the pipe. And so this one is, has been working fairly well. Um, I've had to, I pulled it three times this year and finally got it fixed right. I'm gonna climb up there and get her spinning and see if we can't get a little bit of water pumping for you. Maybe I'll just get it turned into the wind. And the bigger pastures that you have and the more animals you have, the bigger tank you have for the more storage. Um, this windmill right now is pumping about seven gallons a minute, which is extremely good for a windmill. Most of them do between three and four. Uh, you know what varies place to place. Um, this well here is 140 feet. I've got pipe down 100 feet, and I hit water at about 18 feet. Uh, my neighbor right up here, half a mile to the north of me, his well is 600 feet. So it just it varies on which aquifer you hit and where it's at. My heart goes out to Carrie. She's working so hard at her organization and she's gone through so much and now to have cancer again, it's just so devastating, but I'm so, you know, just, it's an honor to be part of this journey with her and helping her organization and her, you know, through this whole process. So I'm really excited to see what she's gonna be doing next.